All right, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you back. Malsberg panel time and uh, the host of the syndicated radio show, The Roger Hedgecock Show, is with us. Roger Hedgecock and Newsmax contributor and host of The Right Side on Newsmax Television, Armstrong Williams. And gentlemen, um, the verdict, or should I say the uh, grand jury, uh, uh, deciding not to indict in the so-called New York uh, City uh, NYPD chokehold case. We have all seen the video of that uh, encounter between the police officers and uh, Eric Gardner, who wound up uh, dying. Uh, he uh, had asthma, couldn't breathe, da-da. Um, but um, Armstrong, you know, I'm watching the, uh, the closed captioning on, on CNN as I uh, was waiting during the break, and Sonny Hostin, who I love to pick on more than almost anybody else, um, she calls herself former prosecutor. She can't understand the difference. The grand jury was hearing evidence on whether or not a crime was committed. She keeps saying it's against police procedure to use a chokehold in New York, but it's not against the law. Isn't the grand jury only concerned about the law being broken? Well, hello, Steve. Um, look, all these um, grand jury decisions that are being handed down uh, only fuels the chaos and the minds of people who refuse to believe that a, a grand jury can examine the evidence back and forth, look at the forensics and everything, and come to this kind of confusion and this kind of conclusion. And it doesn't matter what, unless the grand jury in case where it involves white police officers and, and American blacks, until the jury uh, says uh, something that the police officers should be indicted. You, we can talk about this until the cows come home. It's, it's just not going to change. They keep riding their hopes on cases like Ferguson and in New York because they believe this is the defining moment for America to say, we respect you, you're equal on the law, there's not an assault on black men in this country. And the problem is they keep using the wrong cases um, to prove this point in their psyche. Obviously, I wouldn't dare sit here and question the grand jury's decision. I was not in the room. I did not see all the evidence. I don't know in terms of the cross-examination what people change their minds about. And I, we just have to trust our rule of law. All right. Uh, Roger? Well, I think in this case it's, uh, it's obvious that in both Ferguson and New York City, if the uh, individual involved uh, had simply given up, had simply actually raised the hand, don't shoot, uh, they would have been alive today. I, I think that's the primary bottom line point from, you know, a, a perspective, again, as, as with Armstrong. I, have, I wasn't there. I haven't looked at all the evidence. I haven't been in the room. But it seems to me that if you look at that video, here's a man, you know, who could have easily been alive. Uh, if uh, I mean, the police don't like to do chokeholds. They do it, you know, in protection of themselves and people around them. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And here's the thing. You know, in this case, gentlemen, we have the camera that the president wants put on every police officer. We have the whole encounter. We see uh, this is a man who uh, was accused of, or was thought to be selling illegal cigarettes or Lucy's as they're called. And uh, he said, if, if you listen, he said, you're not, you're not arresting me. No, nope, no, he wouldn't do what the cops said. He's about 360 pounds, and it took about four or five cops to bring him down to put his hands behind his back and arrest him. So once again, you're 100% you're correct, Roger. If you obey the police, you know, chances are you're not going to get killed. Yeah, but, you know, listen, um, there are many lesser charges that the grand jury could have considered in this case, reckless endangerment among one of them. Look, I, 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 think, I think a conversation, and Steve is just interested, I, I just, do we really have to resort? The guy said, you're choking me, I cannot breathe. That was clearly on, on the tape. I mean, that is just, you can't dispute it. Is there, is, could there have been a other, I, I'm sure the police had no idea that they were, this guy was dying, he was really suffocating. And, but obviously, it, and, 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 I, and we also, you can tell I'm agonized over this, because I just, I just hate this loss of life. I just wish that th those, those few police officers could be like the exceptional police officers, the majority, who don't lose lives, who don't resort um, to uh, their guns in order to subdue somebody that's about to do harm or who's out of control. And so I don't want people to get the impression that we are advocating that it's okay in order for the police to do their job to kill somebody in the process. I think that's the last thing we want to happen. But they should raise their hands. They should obey the law. But still, when they don't, can the law enforcement find a way without having the result be 
the death of someone. All right, Roger, I want you to weigh in on that when we come right back. And, of course, it's two different cases. One was self-defense, and this was a, an arrest gone wrong. We'll come right back with uh, Roger and Armstrong.